In the prior video, we talked about using the Have I Been Owned web page in order to identify if your password has been hacked or is using a common password that could easily be hacked in the future. In order to do that, we went to the Have I Been Owned slash API slash V3 uh, page and we looked at the Pwned Passwords Overview documentation and found how we could search by range in order to find the hashes of our passwords to be able to see if they have been possibly attacked or not. In this video, let's take that to the next step and let's actually make this a Python script. I'm going to start by going back to our postman here where we had done a get command uh, with the first five characters of our hash and gotten the results down below. I'm going to start off just by grabbing the code here again under Python requests. Go into Visual Studio Code here. Oops. And let's create a new script. Let's say pwned password. .py. There we go. Paste that in. And if we look through the code here, there is a little bit that is unusual uh, that we haven't seen before. So we start off by importing requests. We define our URL like we had done before. We have our payload, which is blank. And in this case, there is a header that specifies a cookie value. If I scroll over to the left, uh, that's about it. It's just a cookie value. Uh, we then get the response and then we print the response out. Now, if I run this, we'll see that it gives me the hashes as expected. However, this cookie value, I believe I can simply get rid of. So I'm going to delete that. And then run it one more time just to make sure. And we get the same results. Great. What I want to do is I actually want to make this a little bit more dynamic so that I can give it a password and then it can tell me if it's good or not. So for that, I'm actually going to uh, start off by moving some of these lines down and I'm going to prompt the user for a password. So let's create a variable called password and I'll do input. What password? What is the password? Next thing I want to do is I want to hash that. Now, in order to hash in Python, probably one of the best ways to do it is to import a library called hashlib. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another variable here called SHA password. So the SHA, the SHA1 hash of the password is equal to hashlib dot SHA1 specifically our password. And then I have to tell it to encode this into a binary, uh, binary string, binary array, excuse me. And then finally dot X digest. Uh, you can try this without the encode and without the hex digest just to see what happens. Uh, I know from experience that it just doesn't work. Uh, however, if I want, I can then print out the SHA password just to see what happens. And in fact, I'm going to do that. Let's go ahead and comment these out. And let's go ahead and try a password of QWERTY again. And we'll see the hash comes out right there. Great. Next thing I want to do now that I have the hash is I want to break that hash out into two different sections. Remember the API, we have to have the first five characters to send to the API and then the other characters to be on our own machine. So for that, I'm going to create two new variables. I'm going to create them, call them a uh, SHA prefix for lack of a better term. And I want that to be my password. And then using the range options, I'm going to say I want characters zero through five. 
which will give me the first five characters of the of the password of the password hash excuse me uh since i had the prefix let's go ahead and create another one called shaw post fix not sure that's an actual word and that's going to be the shaw password again this time the range operator starts at five and then goes on to the end and since the password is coming in as lowercase, I actually want this to be an uppercase. So I'm going to do a dot upper in order to convert all the letters that are in the hash into uppercase. And in order to show why, well, if we look back at the hashes that are returned by the API, we can see, yeah, these are all in uppercase. So therefore I want my strings to be in uppercase. Okay, now that I have the, the SHA prefix and the SHA postfix, the next thing I want to do, let's uncomment these guys, is I want to change my URL to no longer have this hard-coded prefix of the password. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And instead, I'm going to add in my SHA prefix right there. So we're getting the password from the user, we are hashing the password, and then we are using that hash in order to get the results back. Let's run that just to confirm. And it worked great. I could actually compare that against the uh, API results I'd gotten from Postman, and I probably should if this was my first time doing it. Uh, however, to speed things along, I'm going to assume that it's working properly. Okay, so I've requested the password. I have hashed the password and then I've called the API with that password uh, hash. Uh, called the API right there. What I wanna do now is now I need to parse through all those hundreds or thousands or millions of results to find the rest of my hash. This is where things get a little bit more complicated because of the fact that, well, how the data is returned. First off, the data is returned in two different chunks, the hash and the number of times it's been found. So I have to split those results into two different sections. Let's check that out. Uh, yeah, let's comment that out. So I have my results and let's go ahead and, oh, actually, excuse me. There's two different things I have to do. First is I have to split all those results or that whole entire text set based on the new line. That's what I want. So I'm going to create a variable here called pwned underscore list. And that's going to be the response dot text, uh, response dot text. And I'm going to say split. And then what do I want to split it on? Well, I want to split that on the backslash R backslash N. Backslash R is a carriage return. Backslash N is the new line. Oftentimes one will, in most computer situations, one will work as well as the other. Sometimes you have to use them both. But this will split the entire page of text into separate lines. Once I have all of the lines separated, now I can separate out based on the colon. So now I can do a four pwned pass in pwned list. So now I can take each line one at a time. And I will go ahead and I'll create the hash. Pwned, right. pwned hash is equal to my pwned pass. Oops. But while it's split again, in this case, based on the colon. So it takes, excuse me, this breaks it into separate lines. Line 19 takes the first line and then on line 20 says, look for the colon and everything to the left of the colon is the hash. 
And then the last thing I want is I want the value for that hash. Um, I'm actually going to try it without this first. I'm just going to go ahead and print pound hash. I'm going to print that out. So now when I run it, we should see pretty much the same results we had before, except it will not include the colon and will not include the numbers after the colon. Let's go ahead and run that. Um, actually, hold on. Let's set a breakpoint here. So here, as we get to the loop, we'll set a breakpoint and then we'll use the debugger to walk through it to see each one. Okay. So we got the response.txt and the response.txt was that big, huge blob right there. And as we look through this big, huge blob, we can actually see, yes, there is in fact a backslash R backslash N. That's the new line that's being sent to us from the web server or from the API. So that's why I did the split based on the backslash R backslash N. And now the pwned list is in fact a list of numbers with a colon and then a number after that. Great. For each password in the list, let's step over or step into. We'll see that we grab the very first uh, hash colon and then number. And now we want to split it based on the colon. And now our pwned, pwned hash is only the hash. Um, no, excuse me. It split it, but it kept both, both halves. There we go. So that's not quite what I want, but it's close. It did actually, in fact, split them, uh, but it's now put them into a list object. So I still need to break it out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and stop that. So what I actually want to do at this point is I want to create a dictionary. And I want to store my information in there so that I can then search through it at a later point. Um, let's actually, let's create the dictionary a little bit higher. So pwn dict dictionary uh, is curly braces. Uh, dictionary, for the most part, is a key value pair. Think of it like an English to Spanish dictionary where you say, here's the English word and it gives you the Spanish word. Key value pair. So I want my pwn dictionary to be a key of my pwn hash, the first half of the pwn hash, and then the value to be the second half of my pwn hash right there. Let's walk through that very briefly and see exactly how that works just to confirm it is working the way we expect it to. So password. All right. So at this point, we're already familiar with breaking that apart. Oops. Uh, step into, and now we're going to go ahead and start storing some stuff in our dictionary. Currently the value or the length is zero. There's nothing in there. So we go ahead and we store that. And at this point we can now see our dictionary has, come on, there we go. Our dictionary now has one value with the hash on the left and then the value on the right. So we can keep walking through that and see how additional values get stored in there. Right, great. So that's taking the results. That is storing them into a dictionary. Uh, if we let that keep going, that will store all of them in there. The last thing we need to do is to search that dictionary. And this is where Python really starts to shine. And we can actually start saying, hey, if, if our postfix is in that dictionary, then go ahead and print out the problems. Let's print out how many times that has been found. If it's not in there, then let's go ahead and say it's safe to use. Let's check it out. If SHA underscore postfix 
is in. And let's say our owned dictionary dot keys. That will get a list of all of the keys in our dictionary. Remember, key value pairs. We'll get all the keys in our dictionary and look, look through them to see if SHA postfix is in it. If it is, let's go ahead and print out. Password has been compromised. Compromised X number of times. And then we say what that X is with a dot format. Excuse me. Dot format. And for that, we want the pwn dict. And specifically, jaw postfix. So that will look through the dictionary and look for the postfix and then return the value associated with it. Otherwise, if it has not been found in there, then let's go ahead and print out password is safe. All right. So I'm setting a breakpoint down here for our comparison. Uh, something's wrong here. Hold on. Let's do a new line option there. There we go. And I think I'm missing a parenthesis. All right. Because my text was wrapping off to the side of the screen over here, I did a space backslash and then hit enter. That tells Python, keep reading onto the next line, treat it as if it's this part of the same line. And then I have the content down here. I saw I was missing my second parentheses. I have, if I look through this, I have one opening parenthesis there and another opening parenthesis here. So two opening parentheses. Therefore, I need two closing parentheses as well. So let's go ahead and run this one last time. Again, QWERTY as our password very quickly went and ran the API that ran so fast. We didn't even see it. I now have my shop post fix right there. That's popping up when I hover over the uh, hover over the line. And then when I look at my dictionary here, I have, wow, hundreds of items that it's going to search through 592. I said, so the keys option, does it tell me? Uh, the keys option shows me everything here in purple and it's going to say, Hey, is this in there? Is my post fix in this list? And if I step into it, yes, it is. It's going to go ahead and print out. Yeah, this has already been found. Yeah. 3.9 million times. Let's try that one last time. Except this, uh, no, actually, let's do that. Again. Uh, this time, let's give it a completely random password and see if that's found. Again, we get back to the SHA post fix and we say, go ahead and step into, and it's not found. Therefore, it will print out, yeah, password is safe to use.